Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. Hang on one second. I've got to shut this door. One thing about. conversation going on in there that's really loud so I had to shut my door and I stuffed my robe underneath the door but I can still hear it but anyway hello pray and share warriors how are y'all doing I hope you're doing awesome it is wow Thursday already and I want to talk about Psalm 7 we're continuing to dive into Psalms and I'm really enjoying this study. I hope that you are too. And I am going to, we are going to go before God in prayer. We're not going to dive into prayer anymore. We're going to go before God in prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We know that you are the great I am. We know you are the great Jehovah. We know that you are on your throne and you are in control. And there is nothing that you do not know, God. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm and our strength and our refuge. God, and you are so much more too. God, you are mighty and powerful and magnificent, but yet you are loving and kind and compassionate and forgiving. You are faithful. You are patient, God. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And... Um, we just cry out for the lost, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home, God. We just pray for them to return to you, to repent, and for you to reconcile their relationship, God. Make it just as good as new. God, our hearts break. Our hearts break for some of our military people that lost their lives in Afghanistan. Just really, it did not have to be like that. Things could have been done so much better. I don't know what is wrong with our leadership, God. But it is not, it is not following um, good sense. It is not competent. It is causing people to lose their lives that they don't have to. People in Afghanistan, people that helped our military personnel in Afghanistan are losing their lives. What, what we hear on the mainstream media is not true. There are people on the ground that do not have a biased opinion that are repeat, reporting the truth. And God, you know all truth. God, just please be with these people. Please protect our, our military. Please be with these families that lost loved ones today, that they didn't have to. It wasn't necessary. And please give them peace, comfort, and strength. Please be with our military as it looks like they're going to have to go back in and take over Afghanistan and free the people and free the people that help them, and free the Americans. God, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit angry about this because it was really unnecessary. God, we trust you. We trust you with everything that we have, God. 
and we trust your plans and your purposes and we know that your timing is perfect. You have shown us that over and over, God, within our lives. So just help us to draw closer to you, God. We do pray for all the people that have lost loved ones, either in Afghanistan or for other reasons. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, uh, pray and share words. Yes, I'm a little bit, I'm, I'm quite a bit upset about what happened today, about us having military Marines that lost their lives today, and some were injured because of suicide bombers that were at the Kabul Air, Airport. See, we could have kept our air base, but we turned it over to the Taliban. We could have kept military in our air base and we could have gotten people out. But everything that is done by this administration makes absolutely no sense and it is not for the American people. So I'm a little frustrated. I do pray for our military that they would be protected. I do pray that we would get people out. Now, I don't want, I don't want terrorists coming out, but American citizens that are over there, that went over there to visit family during the summer, they can't get back home. Um, American people that maybe worked for the embassy or worked for our military, they can't get home. All the people that interpreted for us and were loyal and we told them that one day we would get them out and we would bring them to America. They can't get here. And the 31st, next Tuesday is the deadline and there's absolutely no way they can get that many people out without us having that other air base that they gave up. They just like vacated it. I don't get it. Okay, well, it's not what I came here to talk to you about, but I have been hearing this all day, and um, it kind of upset me, but we have no control over any of it, so let's read something that we do have control over, and that is what we read in the Bible. And maybe Psalm 7 will have something to do with what we're going through, what our country is going through. I know a lot of innocent lives are being lost. And maybe, maybe that's part of God's plan. I don't know. But I do know that um, there was a better plan, but it wasn't executed. All right. Psalm 7 says, Prayer and praise for deliverance from enemies. Well, how perfect is that? A meditation of David, which he sang to the Lord concerning the words of Cush, a Benjamite. O Lord my God, in you I put my trust. Save me from all those who persecute me and deliver me, lest they tear me like a lion. Rending me in pieces while there is none to deliver. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is iniquity in my hands, if I have repaid evil to him who was at peace with me, or have plundered my enemy without cause, let the enemy pursue me and overtake me. Yes, let him trample my life to the earth and lay my honor in, that, in the dust. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up because of the rage of my enemies. Rise up for me to the judgment you have commanded. For the congregation of the people shall surround you. For their sakes, therefore, return on high. The Lord shall judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness. And according to my integrity within me, oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. 
Amen. Let the wicked of the wickedness, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God tests the hearts and minds. My defense is of God, who saves the upright in heart. God is a just judge, and God is angry with the wicked every day. I believe that. God is angry with the wicked every day. If he does not turn back, he will sharpen his sword. He bends his bow and makes it ready. He also prepares for himself instruments of death. He makes his arrows into fiery shafts. Behold, the wicked brings forth iniquity. Yes, he conceives trouble and brings forth falsehood. He made a pit and dug it out and has fallen in the ditch which he made. He tro his trouble shall return upon his own head. His trouble shall return upon his own head, and his violent dealing shall come down on his own crown. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness, and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Again, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But my praying share warriors, that is not going to happen until Jesus comes and puts an end to the wicked. And puts an end to their ways. Until then, we are living in this fallen world. David was living in a fallen world. We read 2 Samuel last night at youth and um it was about david's failures and about israel's failures and about his family's failures and that god still forgave them still showed them mercy and still blessed them because that is the god that we serve we serve a god of mercy and blessing forgiveness and love. Okay, so the study part of my Bible for Psalm 7 says, an innocent plea for protection from the false accusations of enemies is reflected. But the psalmist also asks that his enemies overcome him if he was in the wrong. The psalmist's enemies were viewed as the enemies of the Lord. The Lord Most High, the Exalted One, Lord of all, Lord over all, is a title found only twice in the Psalms. Verse 17. See also Psalms 47 2. Images of God in the Psalms. Oh, well, that's right over here. Okay. Well, I think I'll go ahead and read that too. Um, the shield, God as shield, is in Psalms 3.3, Psalms 28.7, Psalms 119.14. God as a rock is Psalms 18.2, 42.9, and 95.1. God as king is 5.2, 44.4, 74.12. God as shepherd is 23.1, 80.1, and these are all in Psalms. God as judge is Psalm 711. God as refuge, Psalms 46.1 and 62.7. God as fortress, Psalms 31.3 and 71.3. God as avenger is 26.1. God is creator is Psalms 8, 1, and 6. God is deliverer is Psalms 37, 39, and 40. God is healer is Psalms 32. God as protector is Psalms 5, 11. God as provider is Psalms 78, 23 through 29. God is redeemer is Psalms 107, 2. So those are all the images of God in Psalms. 
So these are all the things that God is to us. He is our shield, our rock, our king, our shepherd, our judge, our refuge, our fortress, our avenger, our creator, our deliverer, our healer, our protector, our provider, and our redeemer. Those are all the images of God in Psalms. Now, I read 2 Peter this morning. I'm not real sure where it was. And it's on my phone. I'm not sure what it was. Okay, I found it. Okay, <laughs> okay. Oh, let me get some water. I don't have much. Maybe I have enough. Okay, Second Peter one one. Greeting greeting the faithful, Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, grace and Peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine where my cat went I'm sorry of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust faith, fruitful growth in the faith but also for this very reason giving all diligence add to your faith virtue to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he has cleansed that he was cleansed from his old sins therefore brethren be even more diligent to make your call and election sure for if you do these things you will never stumble for so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ Peter's approaching death. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things that you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right as long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. More Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. The trustworthy prophetic word. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power, the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy or scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God 
spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So that was a lot. That was my reading this morning. Second Peter 1. I read all of it. One, three. Okay, well, that concludes the Bible reading. And we are going to move on to um, the salvation part of this. I don't know how I want to share it tonight. Okay, let's do this. This is kind of hard to read, but I can read it. This is really small. This is the keys to life. Keys to life, and this is done by, here's this done by, Gospel Key Tag something. Kind of hard to read. All right. One, God loves you and has a great plan for your life. Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in, I got to get it in the light. Jesus said, my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. John 10, 10. Two, sin separates you from God. We are all sinners. Romans 3.23 The price for sin is death. Romans 6.23 The price is already paid. God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us. While we were still sinners, Romans 5, 8, Jesus bridged the gap of separation between God and man. I may need some um, magnifying glasses for this one. This is really small. Okay, it's a little better like that in the light. It's free. Eternal salvation is a free gift, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. You don't earn or work your way to heaven by morality or religion. Jesus is the key to life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. It's up to you. To ask Jesus into your heart, pray this prayer. Jesus, I ask you into my heart to be my Savior and Lord. Forgive my sins and give me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is important to be baptized, go to church, pray, read your Bible, and share with others what Jesus has done for you. So that is the keys for the keys of life. And then there's all kinds of scriptures in here too. Okay. Well, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. You have now been saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. 
So I am going to do the blessing from God. This is going really fast tonight. Sometimes it doesn't go this fast. When Josie is in here, she's going to miss me. Because I'm just blowing right through this. So Number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So these people in Afghanistan, they need you pray for the people in Afghanistan. You know, people that have nonprofits that are trying to get people out, but our State Department won't let them. Uh, leave the airport or our State Department won't let them um, land at another airport in another country. So it's a little bit of a mess. Our State Department says that they want everybody out, but people are trying to help get them out and they're the obstacle in the way. Makes no sense to me. All right, well, I'm not going to pray about, I'm going to pray about that in my private time. I'm going to do a blanket prayer for everyone here, everyone that might come. And I'm going to get off of here and go feed my child. I'm very sleepy for some reason, and I do not want to go drink any coffee because I want to sleep tonight. God, we just praise you and we thank you, God, for all the many things that you do for us. We just pray, God, that, um, again, we pray for all the people in Afghanistan, God. We pray for protection for them. It seems very dismal for them. But God, I just pray that they would be protected. God, we just pray for all the many people that are sick right now. There are so many, God, that you would just heal their bodies and that they would feel your presence of healing, God. They would know that you're the one that healed them. God, we just pray for um, I pray for Josie and her family in Austin. God, I just pray for her sisters and their family brothers and their families and uh, her children and their families. I just pray for peace and protection and provision and blessings, God. And I pray for my family for the same, for peace and protection, and provision and blessings. God, we just pray. We pray, God, for the lost. Just pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they could be saved. God, we are so thankful. So thankful for everything that you do for us. And we pray for uh, Mike and his continued recovery in the boys, God. We pray for Austin as. He was sick yesterday. We just pray for healing for him. And we pray for um, many unspoken requests, God. But I just can't think of right now. I was supposed to pray for somebody, and I just can't think. God, so if I told anybody that I would pray on Facebook, please lift them up in prayer too. Please attend to their to their needs, God. And we are so thankful, God, that you do provide so much for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to have to get off of here. I am just, I took a multivitamin today, too. But I took allergy medicine. I do that every day. All right, well, y'all have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow, which is Friday. That's already Friday. I've got two birthday parties on Saturday for our son. 
So I will not be here on Saturday. I should be back on Sunday. Should be here tomorrow night, I think, unless something comes up. So much love. Much love to all. Cyber hugs. God bless you and your families abundantly and good night.